Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, and welcome back to the channel. I thank you guys so much for tuning in with me every single week. I want to start out with giving all praises be to the Most High Yahweh, Bahashem Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. He is worthy to be praised, and we are so incredibly thankful that we are here to see another Sabbath. It is a double Sabbath. It's new moon today from last night until this evening. Then we're going into the regular high holy day of the Shabbat. So I'm so very excited that these days have been able to be spent enjoying the word, relaxing, you know, just being full of shalom. So very excited that I'm actually here to be blessed, to be entrusted with this gospel, to sit with you guys another week. Hopefully you guys have had a fantastic week and you're ready as well to relax and to get into his word going into Sabbath this evening. If you have your Bible, go ahead and pull that out. Uh, we are going to be in the King James Version Bible with the Apocrypha. Go ahead and pull out Titus 2, or opened up to Titus 2, uh, 3 through 5. We love to bring out these foundational scriptures, which are very important. Um, you know, I uh, always want to make sure that everybody understands that this is for the women. We are here to teach the young women good things, just like this scripture said. So Titus 2, 3 through 5 reads as follows. The age women likewise, that they be in behavior as become of holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of Yah be not blasphemed. So today is a special lesson directly from my husband. So he said, I think that you should talk about this. And I love the suggestion um, that he gave. It is called No Other Gods Before Me. And I'm also adding five ways to remove other gods from your life. So you'll see all that in the title, but it is what it is. So No Other Gods Before Me, five ways to remove the other gods. Um, so, you know, we love certain things, all of us. I'm a foodie. I love food. I think about food sometimes when I'm eating my next meal. It's ridiculous. I love food. I love the smell. I love to cook it. Um, I love everything about it. It's a whole group of us. That's why we're called foodies because I've told you this before. It's just, I love, you know, I just love everything about the blessings of it, the health benefits of it, the look of it, how it, how it grows, where in different countries, all of that stuff. So that's me. I love food. My husband loves fashion. As I told you guys before that he uh, was a stylist when he was in the world and he still loves fashion. It hasn't gone anywhere. You know, he loves clothes, loves to shop, all that kind of stuff, loves to play around with different outfits and everything. And it's even got me even more interested in it. I give him that. Our kids are interested in it because of him. It's a whole thing. Um, so he always has to make sure that he examines himself. And this is why he suggested this video is that he always wants to make sure that none of that come before the most high. So he suggested this video because he's like, I always have to examine myself. So it may be a good lesson for you to be able to talk to the other women as well, to examine ourselves about these things that we love to do. And it could be a multitude of things. We're going to go into it in this lesson. Um, but first, let's bring out the scripture that says, no other gods before me. So let's go to the beginning. Let's go to Exodus 20 and 3. So go all the way back to Exodus 20, and we're going to read 3 through 5. So Exodus 20, 3 through 5 reads as follows. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth below or that is in the water underneath, sorry, Salakia, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt now bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Most High, thy Elohim, is a jealous Elohim, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So I wanted to bring all that out because sadly, the list can be long for if, if for everybody in this world, if you think about all the different gods that people worship, it can be endless. So we're just going to go over a couple of them. So I, you know, wrote these down and I want you to kind of really think about where you might fall in to these lists and kind of, like I said, the whole point of this video is examining ourselves to making sure that we always have balance with all of this stuff. So it can be anything from self and physical appearance because the sin of pride you know, can cause us to look at ourselves as the end, you know, by looking to ourself 
to be the answer to all of our ills. Um, being a good steward of our bodies as well, like physical appearance, is also good. But the obsession for the best body can become a god. And you know that what they're called, they're called gym rats. You know, people that constantly stay in the gym and constantly stay in the mirror and, and always like you, you can go into making it a profession with bodybuilding and start taking pills for it, getting the best body that they can possibly be. And all they do is think about working out. And even let's take it down. Let's take it all the way down to the simplest terms. And even us that just love to, I love to work out too. I always have, you know, really um, uh, thinking of if once you kind of get over that hump of exercising and you really, really enjoy it, it can consume your brain. You guys know what I'm talking about. Y'all, some of y'all out there know what I'm talking about. You think about it all day. You're like, oh my gosh, I have a quick little, you know, couple 20 minutes. I'm gonna go work out. You know, I'm gonna I'm do two a day. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this for an hour and a half today. I'm gonna do this extreme workout. You know, I'm gonna go running today and then push myself. It can, it can really become obsessive, you know, once you kind of get over that hump and find your joy in it. So you have to really be careful because your own body can also, and, and obsessing over these things can become your God. Another thing is wealth. Number two, we all know that's easy. That's, I, it kind of goes without saying, but I had to put it on the list. You know, the love of money is in the scriptures. That is the root to all evil. So I absolutely, the most high understands this as being a God to a lot of people. That's why he has a scripture that says, you worship man, um, sorry, mammon, or you worship me. You know, you cannot worship both. You know, you and mammon is money. You cannot worship money and worship me. There's a ton of people that's out here that's chasing this bag that are Christians that, you know, feel like they're, you know, still believe in the most high and still love the most high, but yet, you know, they're really obsessed with trying to get the white man's money, you know, the Edomite's money, you know, and, and trying to make sure that they have this, you know, high status of success and have this old money that these Edomites have, which is like, it's like running on a treadmill that you're never going to get to. You will get to that, but it's just, you'll never really, anyway, I'm not even going to go there. We all know in the truth what I'm trying to say. And I don't even need to go there because we all know that if you really love the most high and you're following these laws, statutes, and commandments, you ain't worried about chasing no bag. So I'll just put it like that. You know, because it can be per pervasive, you know, it can weigh us down um, because of the perceived power that it gives us comfort. So wealth can also become a God to you. Love as well. You know, if we love a person more than we love the most high, then they are an idol. Uh, comfort, you know, on the heels of wealth. I'll say that, you know, comfort follows right behind that one. You know, we don't want to be uncomfortable. So we can bow down to things and people who promise a, a problem-free life. Another one um, as well is Hasatan, the devil. I mean, it goes without saying that people worship him directly. So that can be your God. All right. So another one is hedonism, which is self-indulgence. And that means that we may not bow down to ourselves, obviously, but we can certainly um, uh, make ourselves the ultimate pleasure. So you got to be careful as well. Family. Family is good. I love family. We all love having our family, you know, but the most high uh, also comes first before that. So we have to remember that some people put their kids or their spouse and make that their idol and like worship over their children just to see a smile on their face. So that's why you want to make sure that that's on the list too. So you got to be careful and have balance and all these things. Uh, technology, we can talk about our phones. You know, how often do you see someone, you know, bowing down pretty much before their cell phones and you take that thing out their hand and they want to almost kill you. They're like, where is my phone? I need my phone. They wake up in the morning, they're on their phone. They're on their phone for long. I mean, you can go to Instagram and look at your own screen time and it'll tell you right there how much screen time it is. And we have to be careful with these things because I've seen plenty of documentaries of the people that own Google, own Facebook, they're former owners. They're not anymore because once it got to a point of being obsessive for the consumer, they felt bad about it. Those people don't even let their own family have as much screen time or even have the app at all because of, of how um, destructive it can be in a young person's life into all of our lives. So we have to be careful about technology. Uh, status. This includes vocation, like your profession, education, achievements, lifestyle, 
vacations in your lifestyle and in who we know, you know, uh, and, and who we know, you know, that kind of thing, like um, the status, you know, of like they say that saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So we got to be careful of that too, because you can constantly chase after that, you know, and kind of put yourself on the, on the pedestal because of all the education that you have and all the accomplishments that you have and, you know, a certain lifestyle that you have. And I have to be, I have to keep this lifestyle. And if you're going to be in my life, you have to maintain this lifestyle for me. You have to be careful with all of this knowledge. Um, when somebody has all manner of degrees, you know, that also can give a person prideful tendencies because I mean, oh my God, you'll be so you'll hear somebody and they'll be like, you know, well, they'll they'll start to um, talk down to other people, being arrogant with other people. Um, and uh, um, just it's more it's a word I'm trying to think of, but just kind of being high and mighty, you know, just kind of just having too much self um, esteem. <laughs> uh, there's so many different adjectives for all the stuff that I'm trying to say. Um, but you guys know what I mean. You have to be careful with all that just because you have this education where you think that, you know, you can, you think you all that your vocabulary is big and, and you put, you have earthly wisdom. Hmm, we'll say that earthly wisdom. Um, also a person likes worshiping of celebrities and they can become your God. That's why we have something that's called American Idol. Hmm. Think about that one. Think about why they chose the name of that. Identity as well was one of the last ones that I wrote down. How we define ourselves, our own identity, and how we place ourselves above others, right? And have them look up to us, which is what I was kind of going into um, with uh, um, status, but it's kind of like the same thing. So in saying all of that, no matter what form, because that list can be longer than that. So no matter what form, you know, it, it is, a God other than the Most High is always in opposition to the Almighty. So let's go to Psalm, uh, the book of Psalms 96 and 5. I know that sometimes when I say that, 96 and 5. I know that sometimes when I say I'll say the uh, the book of Psalm, because when you look at the Bible, it says Psalm, and then sometimes it'll say Psalms if you look like online and stuff like that. So don't don't laugh at me when I'm like, the book of Psalm, it says the book of Psalm. Okay. So let's go to 96 and 5. And it reads as follows, for all the gods of the nations, and this is all, every time I say gods is with a lowercase g, because it's not Elohim, okay? For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the most high made the heavens. All the way. Most high made the heavens. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. All these other gods don't do anything. And we're going to go into that later on in this lesson. I'm going to read Isaiah 44, I'm going to read a large chunk of it of how the Most High really feels about it, okay? So the next one I wanted to bring out is Jeremiah 25 and 6. So let's go to the book of Jeremiah. And let's go to verse 25 and 6. And it reads as follows. And go not after other gods to serve them and to worship them and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands and I will do you no hurt. <laughs> Most of us like, don't make me mad and make me do something to you, okay? Don't make me upset. Don't provoke me to anger, seriously. So we have to be extremely careful of not putting other stuff before him. And I'm gonna give you some tips in this video as well, again, of how to remove those other guys from your life if you find that some of this is resonating at home with you. Don't worry. Don't worry. I got, I got you. Okay. I got you. Okay. So let's go to Colossians 3 and 2. And it reads as follows. Colossians 3 and 2. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. That's one of my favorite scriptures. Colossians 3 and verse 2. Because there is things that we love to do and we don't realize that our heart is in it and our mind is in it and it, and it and and you can put so much time into it that it comes before the most high so i really love that so set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth and that right there will have you have smooth sailing you don't have to worry about it you will have smooth sailing you just have to make sure that you're constantly worried about the most high the parables you know uh scriptures breaking it down reading you know getting into his word think about things above not all things on the earth not worrying about all the stuff that i said technology 
your you know vanity um financial success education you know to the point of pushing out the most high you know that's the whole point is that we don't want anything to be on the same level as him nothing else can qualify as a god in your life the true elohim is not only to be number one but he is to be the only one okay so i'm not saying Let's make this clear. I'm not saying that you still can't enjoy these things. Love is beautiful. Working out is fantastic. The Most High does not like gluttony. So he wants you to work out. <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong. So I can't hang up. Don't get me wrong. He loves that you keep your body, you know, the way that he wants you to do. Don't, don't think that, you know, not working out and I'm not a gym rat and that's okay. No, he don't want you eating all day either and not working out. That's why he says you work for six days and then on the seventh day you take rest. That's why we're having our Sabbath tonight because you should be doing all that stuff. You just have to have balance on when you do those things. Family, that's also a beautiful thing. Going to school, that's also a fantastic thing. You should be smart. You know, you want to push yourself educationally. You don't want to put too much emphasis on it where you think that that wisdom is better than the wisdom of the Bible. But you, if you're in school, do good at what you're doing. So I, I'm not trying to say that. So you, so I want you to understand exactly what I'm saying. It is to be careful not to put it before the Most High. That is the point because there's no salvation in any of those things. And let's bring that out. Let's go to Acts four and twelve. Acts 4 and 12 reads as follows. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. He just says it right there. There's no salvation in any of these things, you know? So we have to remember that we are his chosen people. We are the holy generation. We are his seed. We praise him. He's our only Elohim. I know everybody tries to take him and <laughs> try to say, oh God, 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 you know, like it's there. No, he's the God of Israel. One God of Israel. He and you are his only chosen people. That is very clear when you read these scriptures. So let's bring that out. So uh, go to first Peter two and nine, you know, so it's just, you know, we have to make sure that we're praising him and worshiping him. You know, he can get it from everything. He doesn't need us to do that, but it's it's an honor to do it. It's a pleasure to do it. Why would you not want to praise and worship the Most High? He's worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Like seriously. So we are going to, 1 Peter 2 and 9 reads as follows. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, the royal priesthood of Israel, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yes, he did. Yes, he did call you out of darkness. You was walking in wickedness and in darkness your whole entire life when you were in the world. He called you out of it. Just be thankful for that, you know? Be thankful for that. It's such a beautiful thing, you know? Our tendencies... Um, are to cave into our cravings, to our flesh, you know, and to fall prey to the thinking um, that they will give us the comfort and happiness that we need. So it's easy to put all those things as high significant in your life because it gives you comfort in those things. You Well, you think that you have comfort in those things. That's the point, you know, but the Most High is faithful, you know, to bless us in this life. But there's no blessing bigger and more important than the source of the blessing. So we always have to take it back to the most high. So let's go to Deuteronomy 32 and 39. We always got to take it back to the most high. Uh, 32 and 39. two and 39 reads as follows deuteronomy 32 and 39 uh see now that i even i am he and there is no god with me <laughs> see that there is no god with me i kill 
and I make alive, I wound, and I heal, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. That's everything and every spirit, every body, every, every entity, every deity. That's why he says what he says. That's why you highlight that one right there. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. That is just so powerful. And we're going to link that up with Habakkuk. So let's go to uh, Habakkuk 2 and 19. And I know that people might say Habakkuk. People different say it, say it in different ways. Habakkuk, Habakkuk. So anyway, go to 2 and 19. And it reads as follows. Woe unto them that saith to the wood, awake. And to the dumb stone, arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. That's why I wanted to link those two things together. People think that. That's why we're going to bring this out in Isaiah shortly of, of how we as people, hopefully none of us, but we as people can get it so twisted in our heads of the power of what, I mean, you've seen it. Let's think about this for a second. You've seen other cultures and Israel too, but you've seen people that will take a statue and put rows and rows of food in front of it and flowers and they'll come worship it and bow down to it like this thing is going to do something you made it with your hand so how is it going to do anything it can it can it's literally made of wood and stone or, or if you look at the people that's over in the middle east walking around um the cobblestone um and worshiping and touching it and, and it's a stone that's why the most i said wood and stone like christians you have the wood of the cross you bow down to that cross acting like it's going to do something knowing somebody you know made that thing or for stone, like the Kaaba stone. So we have to know that the Most High knows the end. He knows what humans are going to do. That's why I said worshiping wood and stone. Because he already understands that people are going to make graven images out of wood. And, and make all these different deities. That they're going to put this food in front of and act like it can be anywhere close to what he is. So we have to remember that even though he's the Most High of Israel. The Most High makes everybody so he wants every knee to bow that's what we got to understand he knows that there's going to be a lake of fire and there's going to be people that's not going to repent but the most high wants everybody to bow the knee to him he don't care who you are i don't care if you an african or or you know like a hamite i don't care if you're an edomite a moabite and an ammonite it doesn't ammonite it doesn't matter who you are he wants every knee to bow now he knows it won't happen which is why he said that, you know, when I search all these different nations, what he said in the second address, and when I search all these different nations, I don't hear my name anywhere except for the uh, nation of Israel. So I love you as my chosen people. That's why he chose us. You know, that's why it says in scripture, you know, when Jacob and Esau were in the womb before anybody had did anything, he chose Jacob because he knew what Jacob was going to be. He could see it. You can talk to a bunch of different Edomites out there. And most of them, I've talked to a couple of my um, bosses recently, you know, uh, and, and they're happy to be like, I'm an atheist or I don't, you know, have any beliefs or I'm, eh, I don't really have any. They say it like it's nothing. So it's so the Most High knows how the whole nations are, how all of these nations are, and how they don't believe in Him. However, however, the Most High, that's why He looks at them as a, a scripture again. He looks at these nations being a drop in the bucket. But however, He wants everybody to bow the knee, period, because He is the one that created. He's the one that gives you life and, and breath. He's the one that that is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the end. The, so He wants everybody. So that's why he's like, who, why are you worshiping? Other, I don't care who you are. Why are you worshiping other guys? Why are you worshiping a Buddha or whoever it is? That thing's not going to do nothing for you. If you're going to do anything, then you should be converting, if you will, you know, to the one true Elohim of Israel. So if you look through this Bible, it's interesting how Christianity and the Roman Catholic Church have kind of made uh, God be everybody's God. Because if you read scripture, everybody in these other nations had their other gods, whether it was the Babylonians with Baal or it didn't matter what nation it was that we kind of found ourselves in captivity with because, you know, we kept going off and most I could put us in captivity. 
they knew that the one true God, right? And I'm putting that in quotations because people um, uh, knew that he was the God of Israel alone. And there was no mix up of it, like how it is with the Christian church and with this with Roman Catholics and how he's now, he's the God of everybody. No, everybody knew that the Hebrews, this nation of Israel had their own God. That's his God. And they knew it was the same God that created everything. They just didn't bow down and believe the power of him, but they knew that he was a creator of everything. They weren't silly to that. And they weren't silly to the fact that they knew that, that uh, the nation of Israel was the one that were the chosen people. So since we've gotten so far from that, and it's been so distorted with all of these different religions, people don't understand that we are the chosen people like they did back in the day. Um, but back in the day, my point is, is that he still wanted all of those people to still believe in him. He still wanted that. It didn't matter. You know, he still wanted all those different kings to be like the most high that is the king or sorry, that is the um, God to your actual nation. I'm going to follow as well. He is fantastic. And he's the, he's, you know, the, the God of all gods. And I'm going to also worship him the same way that you guys do. So that, that most high, you know, wants that from each and every one. So to take it back to what we were saying, our marriages, our best friends, um, jobs, houses, habits, hobbies, you know, all of these things take a backseat to the most high, to the one, the only one who numbers our days. We have to remember that he numbers. That's why it says that in Habakkuk, you know, I'm the one, you know, I'm the one that heals. I'm the one that, you know, takes away, you know, I'm the one that, um, oh, sorry, Deuteronomy. Um, I'm the one that can, I'm the one that is, makes you alive and can kill you. Nobody can take you out of my hand, you know, nobody at all. Um, so we are going to go to Revelation 19 and 7 because in the scriptures, we have to see how the Most High is looking at the nation of Israel like a woman. We are the bride. He's the groom and we are the bride. So we have to get ready for the marriage, which is called the marriage supper of the lamb. And the lamb is Jehoshaphat. So we have to understand how he looks at us and how he looks at us going off and following other gods. So we're going to get into that. So Revelations 19 and 7 reads as follows. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready. See that? So we have to um, look at ourselves in that way in the scripture. So how can we go about worshiping any other God and remain spotless and pure? We can't. That's the answer. Answer is we can't do it. So the most high equates worshiping other gods as adultery, right? Because we are his bride. So let's, let's uh, bring that out. I ain't just saying that. Let's go to Leviticus 20 and 5. So let's go to the book of Leviticus 20 and 5. And it reads as follows. Leviticus 20 and 5. Then I will set my face against that man and against his family, and I will cut him off. And all that go a whoring after him to commit whoredom with Molech from among their people. So Molech also was a particular god of another nation. So like when you see the Illuminati, Illuminati nowadays and they pass their children to the fire, they sacrifice children, they're sacrificing it to the old god Molech, which is still a wooden statue um, that they still sacrifice children to till this day. Um, and, they, and that's why nothing's changed under the sun. <laughs> Even from ancient days, nothing has changed. He's, he's back in Leviticus and it's still going on today. That's crazy. However, the whole point of this scripture is when he says that, and all that go whoring after him because he looks at it as adultery. So let's read, let's go to Isaiah 44. Let's get into it. Let's read how the Most High feels about God's made of wooden stone. And we're going to read a good chunk of this. So let's go to um, Isaiah 44. And I'm going to read 6 through 21. 
a good chunk. All right, so let's get into it because we're about to close out this. Yeah, we're getting to the end of this lesson. All right. Isaiah 44, 6 through 21, right? All right, reads as follows. Thus saith the Most High, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Most High of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. And beside me, there is no God. And who, as I shall call and shall declare it and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. They that make a graven image are all of them vanity, and their delicate and delectable things shall not profit, and they are their own witnesses. They shall not nor know that they may be ashamed. Who have formed a God or molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing? Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed, and the workmen, they are of men. Let them all be gathered together. Let them stand up. Yet they shall fear, and they shall be ashamed together. The smith with the tongs both worketh in the coals, and fashioneth it with hammers, and worketh it with the strength of his arms. Yea, he is hungry, and his strength faileth. He drinketh no water, and is faint. The carpenter stretcheth out, stretcheth out his wool, like his ruler. He marketh it out with a line. He fitteth it with planes, and he marketh it uh, out with the compass, and maketh it after the figure of a man, according to the beauty of a man, that it may remain in the house. He heweth him down cedars, and taketh the cypress and the oak, which are trees, which he strengthened for himself among the trees of the forest. He planteth an ash, and rain doth nourish it. Then shall it be for a man to burn, for he will take thereof and warm himself yea he kindled it and baketh bread yea he maketh a god and worshipeth it he maketh it a graven image and falleth down there too he burneth part thereof in the fire with part thereof he eateth flesh he roasteth roast and is satisfied yea he warmeth himself and say ah i am warm i have seen the fire and the residue thereof he maketh a god, even his graven image. He falleth down unto it, and worshipeth, and prayeth unto it, and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my God. They have not known nor understood, for he hath shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand. And none considereth in his heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire. Yea, also I have baked bread unto the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? He feedeth on ashes and deceived heart hath turned him aside that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, is there not a lie in my right hand? Remember this, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. Man, that was amazing. That right there tells you exactly how he feels. Summing up all of that and saying, how are you going to be a carpenter, going to be a woodsman, and you take these same trees, the cypress tree and the oak tree, and you break them all down, and you make fire, and you're roasting your, your roast, your lamb. You know, you take it and you warm up your house with it. And with that same tree, you can make an image right in front of you, bow down to it and say, you are my God, I worship you, save me. That don't even make no daggone sense. If that wood that you just roasted and use it there, or you're using it as kindling a fire to keep you warm. How is how are those two things going to save you? Would it why would you worship down in front of the roast, in front of the fire that's warming you up, but yet it's something different when you make a graven image out of it? The disrespect. That's what he's saying. I don't understand what's wrong with you. <laughs> like he's like there is delusion. You are deceived. That's why he says this in verse twenty. He feedeth on ashes. A deceived heart have turned him aside that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, is there not a lie in my right hand? Because you don't even understand it. You're not even seeing it. You know, so we have to be sure to give the Most High his time, not any of this other stuff. 
we give the most high his time. So if it's been a couple of days, my, my, my husband said this the other day, he, I'm writing this down, big bold letters. If it's been a couple of days and you look up and you haven't prayed or you haven't read your scriptures, then you can rest assured that you gave too much time to your other God. That's just what it is. I mean, that's just straight no chaser, okay? Straight no chaser. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 10 and 14. All praises. Turn right to 1 Corinthians. See? 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 1 Corinthians 10 and 14. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All praises be to the most high. All right. So 1 Corinthians 10 and 14. Wherefore, my beloved, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Plain and simple. Flee from idolatry. So here are five ways. We're finally here at the end of the lesson. Here are five ways to remove other gods. So number one, start your day with prayer. And that's the first one out the gate. You got to thank the most high for his love and his forgiveness. We have to pray a certain way though. So I want to say this. I've said this in other videos before. And I said this to my husband. I was like, I've told people that he's like, say it again. Say it again. <laughs> It don't matter. It might be new people that's watching. It might be people that didn't see that video or whatever. The way that you pray is you want to make sure that you pray toward the east. We are praying toward our homeland, which is Jerusalem. And there are scriptures that back that up too. You want to pray toward the east, which is Jerusalem. So you can um, take your phone and there's, there's a compass on everybody's iPhone. I'm not sure how the other phones work, but there's a compass on everybody's iPhone. So find that compass. That's an app that's already embedded into your phone. Um and you are going to move it around in your house or wherever you are because even we do it in restaurants too because we got to make sure when we're praying over our food that we're praying toward the east he'll whip his phone out quick my husband whip his phone out quick and be like oh we got to face this way i don't care who's watching you do this for the most high i don't care if somebody looking at you praying toward like who cares about these people they ain't praying anyway so you move your compass around find which way is east and if you're at home and you have the ability to because it all goes to if, if you're able to get down onto the ground um, get down onto your knees and put your head bowed to the ground, all the way to the ground. And there's also scripture that says that in Daniel. Go all the way to the ground, putting your hands up with hands open. We're not Christians and closing our hands. We are receiving these blessings. So if you can't, then make sure that you're standing up and you're facing toward the east with your hands open and your head bowed, right? So we want to make sure that we're not praying for vain things and praying repetitively, like babbling too much. That's also scripture. Don't babble too much as you're uh, praying. You know, you can think about what you're going to say and making sure that you are praying, not praying amiss, and you're trying to pray. So don't pray like, Father, art thou? Pray like you're talking to the Most High with a great relationship with Him. You know, the, the Most High is not hearing your prayers directly from your mouth. There's angels that intercede, just so you know, that's also scriptures that go up to him and actually say exactly what needs to be said in the holy way it needs to be said. So you still say your prayer and you say it with a open and clean and humble heart. That's how you pray to him. And it will get to the most high in the third heaven in the most glorious way through the angels. So um, that is the first one is to make sure you start your day with prayer. The second way to remove other gods is to read your Bible daily. I know I brought this out plenty of times. Go back to some of my videos before or uh, my video before that talks about how to read the Bible, linking Bible book to Bible book so you can go through this Bible in the most effective way and then read it over and then read it over and then read it over and then read it again. Continue to do it. Read it every single day. You know, you want to ask the Most High to open your heart and, and your mind to receive his message that he has for you through these scriptures. Number three, pause and consider the importance of a relationship with the Most High. You know, don't just run through this, all this stuff. These are very important steps. You know, make sure that you're understanding and considering the importance of your relationship with him. Ask for these things in your prayers to grow a relationship with him. You know, now granted, the way that he goes about it may not be the way that you like it, but at the end of the day, he knows best, okay? So four, ask the Most High for help to remove those other gods. So if any of that stuff resonated with you, then pray, pray about it. You know, go to the most high, you know, and he knows that's between your relationship. That's between you and him, not me, your relationship with him. You know exactly what touched a nerve out of all the stuff that I said. And if you feel that there is times when, when you're giving too much of your 
moments when you're giving too much of your time to it and not to the most high, then pray for it to get better and pray for his help. Ask. That's why it's all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct that path. I didn't say that earlier, but that's one of my favorite scriptures. And all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. And I'll also say before this lesson is over, this is the day that Yah has made. It's a beautiful day. And this is the day that Yah has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. So we always have to go back to him and, and lean on him and seek him, you know, praise him, worship him, you know, let him be number one in your life. Number five in the final one is end the day with prayer. Start your day with prayer, end your day with prayer. And if you can, in the middle of your day, pray again. We are praying without ceasing, okay? That's what the Most High wants us to do because we want to thank the Most High for all his mercies. He didn't have to bring you home at the end of the night. There's plenty of people that pass away when they left the house. They didn't think they were going to die that day. So no day is guaranteed. You don't know. No the next day is not guaranteed. So if he allows you to come home back into your home at nighttime, you better thank him before you go to bed. Get down on your hands and knees again or pray standing up again and praying toward the east with your hands open, thanking him for his mercies that the guardian angels you have around you allowed you to get home. So that's it, you guys. I hope this has been a fantastic video for you. I hope this is helping you re-examine yourself. With That's what we got to do. We got to constantly examine ourselves and always making sure that at the end of the day, we're trying to get the kingdom and that the most high is the most important uh, uh, being in our lives. So every single thing, and we thank him through his son, Hamashiach Yahawashai. So I want to say thank you. All praises be to the most high, Yahawah, Bahashem, Hamashiach Yahawashai, for his grace, for his mercy, for his all-knowing omnipotence, omnipresence in our lives. And we thank him so very much for allowing this lesson to come out. I hope it edified at least one of you guys. I did my job and I hope you guys have a beautiful and blessed Sabbath starting this evening, going into tomorrow, get some rest, get into these scriptures, look over this, listen to the lesson again, write these scriptures down, you know, and making sure that you're examining yourself, pray on these things and grow your relationship with the most high. All praises and hallelujah. Love you guys. Shabbat shalom.